Sur un des films en compétition, donc Boy Call Piano, on reçoit donc Nina Nawalo Walo, Farmoana Loafutu, Mathias Loafutu, Catherine Wyatt et du coup Lucille Guichetti Rao à la modération. Je laisse la parole à nos intervenants. Bonjour, bonjour à tous au public et aux internautes qui nous suivent. Bonjour à tous les quatre et merci d'être là aujourd'hui pour parler du film A Boy Called Piano. Euh, Nina, vous êtes euh, donc la réalisatrice du film et vous êtes aussi directrice de théâtre euh, en Nouvelle-Zélande. Et ça fait plusieurs années que vous travaillez avec la famille Luafutu. Comment euh, l'idée de réaliser ce film est-elle venue Ah, well, Nissan Bulavinaka, uh, obviously it's such a privilege to uh, come to Tahiti and to share our work with you. Um, of course, um, you know, great collaborations and trust have been built over a long arc of time and Matthias here is really the beginning of our story and how we met the family. Um, He was at Toifakari, which is the New Zealand Drama School, and uh, my husband, Tom McCrory, who was a, one of the tutors, met him. And uh, Matthias uh, was into his sort of nearly towards the tail end of his training, and um, he chose to leave. And And as a way of um, explaining why he didn't feel to, uh, he, to tell his own story, he left his father's book in uh, my husband's pigeonhole. And this was uh, Fatmoana's book that he wrote in prison, called A Boy Called Broke. And we had this idea um, and for my husband Tom and his bond with Matthias and his beautiful talent, um, you know, we thought, oh, we could make this into a play uh, because we are theatre makers first. Um, and so we approached Matthias and then he spoke to his father and Then, of course, his brother is the most uh, renowned New Zealand hip-hop artist, Scribe. And so we, we decided to, you know, would, we would they be interested to develop the story? And, and, and so it, it really began from Fatmoana when he came to New Zealand as a child. And we thought, let's look at the arc of taking it all the way from that moment um, through to the Christchurch earthquake. Because they are a Christchurch family, because uh, the things of going into state care, the stories of many Māori and Pacific children, uh, a lot of the uh, realities is generational. Um, and so it really began as a play called The White Guitar. And then we toured this, and then we moved um, forward and, and really put the lens on um, the a particular time when Fatmoana was uh, taken into care um, as a young boy. And this is the beginning of a boy called Piano. Um, and, you know, COVID brings many things, doesn't it? And we were going to tour um, through New Zealand with the play and COVID happened and um, we were able to translate it into a radio play and then into this documentary. So for myself, uh, Catherine and my husband Tom, we are the conch and it is our absolute honour to work with the Luafutu Ayinga family for eight years and to build this working relationship. Thank you. À l'époque, euh, donc de, de l'époque de, de, de Famoana, les, les camps de, de redressement euh, fleurissaient. C'était les années 1960 euh, en Nouvelle-Zélande. Aujourd'hui, qu'est-ce qu'il reste de cette page sombre de l'histoire néo-zélandaise Aujourd'hui, qu'est-ce qui reste de cette page sombre de l'histoire néo-zélandaise par rapport à ces camps de redressement euh, pour garçons 
des années 1960. Est-ce que c'est une page de l'histoire néo-zélandaise qui est connue et qu'est-ce qu'il en reste Uh, when I first went into care, it was because I wasn't going to school. My cousins and I were fresh from Samoa, and we couldn't speak English, and we were meant to arrive in New Zealand and go and get educated and become doctors and lawyers. That was the hope of our parents. When we left Samoa, it was the dream of a better life, but uh, when we got to New Zealand, it was so different. It wasn't a better life. The streets weren't paved with gold. We came across a whole lot of racism um, and just a feeling of, what are you doing here as a child? My parents, they were very subservient to a system. They just went there and they were labored and they worked. My mother worked as a cleaner and she expected us to go to school and become clever and become educated and go back to Samoa. Yes. It didn't turn out that way, I'm sorry. Et aujourd'hui, est-ce que c'est une page de l'histoire néo-zélandaise qui est, qui est connue Est-ce qu'il y a une volonté de réparation de l'État néo-zélandais Qu'est-ce qui reste de cette page sombre de l'histoire the same thing still happening. Um, uh, the labels have changed uh, what it used to be. It used to be social welfare, yeah. and then became SIPS, and now it's called Oranga Tamariki, which is... Government department. Which is pretty much the same system. <coughs> Um, and kids will still be taking off their parents. And not as much as I guess um, is what my father went through, but they're still, sadly, the same things happening to these children. So the label has changed, but not the system. Nina, pour qu'on comprenne bien, parce qu'aujourd'hui, ça nous choque avec notre regard des années 2020, mais à l'époque, comment est-ce que ça a pu exister dans le silence le plus total Well, I think it's very universal. I think that indigenous children, um, what has been so interesting is the, is the documentary moving, uh, we, you know, to Canada and to recently to the Sami people uh, in Finland, uh, Australia. You know, it is, um, it is something that is hidden. You know, there are hidden, many, many hidden things. And, and what is so important um, is to speak one's truth um, and the impacts of, you know, the government and the things that they that they did to uh, within state care, um, and it's it becomes quite generational. So, uh, the bravery of Fatmoana to tell his own story for his son, for his grandson, um, to share it, it actually brings to the surface um, the universal nature of. Um, a lot of breakdown of indigenous communities. Um, yeah, um, I suppose there's a lot of the formations of the gangs, that yeah. things that happened of the bonding of children um, in, in the in-state care. Um, but you know, in order to heal, um, we must bring the truth to the surface and we must um, release things. Um, 
and you know there's so much bound into shame with family names shame if you've gone to prison shame that your family name will be out there you know pacific people and their mana so um, what is wonderful is we are being educated ourselves from sharing the story and realizing the indigenous connection uh, throughout the world et aujourd'hui, est-ce qu'il y a une volonté de réparer de la part du gouvernement de l'État néo-zélandais In the, in the film, I'm speaking to the Royal Commission of New Zealand, who denied that there was any abuse in their system. When I came out and told my story, like thousands of other kids, they realised then, you know, um, the damage that was done to kids that were taken into government care. When I went there as a little child, the staff were very bad. Um, they didn't have trained people there, anybody off the street can go and work with children. So we had pedophiles and people like that looking after us kids and I've seen kids in there being sexually abused, uh, that kind of treatment, what we saw, the violence in there. And um, after all these years, I wanted to come out and say, you know, once upon a time, there was very few of us Pacific Islanders or Polynesian people in there, it was about five or six of us. Now. The whole population of New Zealand is Polynesian. First there's more Maoris, then there's the um, Samoans, Rarotongans. So when we went to New Zealand for the better life, we just ended up being part of the population of prisoners. You know? and, um, and that's the event. A lot of people who were in care, all us kids. When you come out, it's like going to war. You come back, you're tra traumatised. You come out, you can only relate to people that have been through that trauma with you. So that's why I say, I don't believe that the word of gangs, you know, we're just veterans of a, a real horrible system that just abused us as kids, you know. And that's why they have um, uh, RSA, return services, soldiers, they can only talk to themselves. They don't talk to other people because what they seen was really horrible. And what I saw as a kid, so the, sim the parallels are there. What I saw as a, a young kid being taken care of by these new parents of mine, the government, was horrible, you know. And so all the guys that were in there, there's been thousands now, and the government is asking why there's so many gangs in New Zealand. I can tell you that most of those gangsters have all been in care in one time or another. The reason why I got a lot of um, showing in that, in that film is because I'm the oldest survivor out of all those kids. A lot of them have died. Some of them don't even want to come forward. They just say, stick you to the system. But I thought if I share my life, it might help bring change to the government. And uh, so that's why I got involved with doing this documentary with Nina, who's so brave, her and her husband, to take this work on. Thank you. Oui, je crois que dans le film, vous dites à, vers la fin du film, ils ont créé des êtres de colère et de haine. Et malgré tout, euh, dans le film, Nina, il y a, il y a des scènes euh, de la musique, de la danse, des scènes sous l'eau. Comment est-ce qu'on arrive à amener euh, de l'art, du beau, au milieu d'une histoire si triste et si dramatique Je pense que quand vous voulez dire la vérité d'une à une audience et à une a universal audience, not just your own uh, own people. Um, it's the way you tell it. Um, so we didn't. Uh, I felt with the collaboration with Nina, and when we talked about it with with, with the with the company, we didn't want to dump our pain on people without showing the light, without showing how we sort of navigated our way out of the darkness um, to the arts. So I think the focus was. Um, for us was to tell the story in the most loving way, to say it with love, um, uh, even though there was a lot of uh, anger that still resided with, 
was residual with me and my father being in systems. Um, so uh, what we learned with the white guitar is, um, uh, Nina told uh, you before, like it's a collaboration that had started eight years ago. So for us to initially uh, talk about our lives and the pains that we've gone through as immigrants, um, because you know, not all of us become all blacks, not all of us become lawyers, not all of us become doctors, even though that's the wishes of our family, there are some that fall through the gaps. And unfortunately, that was our Ainga, our family. Um, some of us fallen through that. So it was, how do we get back to the mana and the line of chiefs that we used to be um, living in the country that was um, new to us? So through the arts, through telling it with love, um, through using all the elements that we knew, um, was the best way we could tell it to the audience for them to understand um, instead of dumping our pain on them. And, you know, yeah. And I suppose, uh, you know, nature is a big, uh, it was a big part of what leads us with our storytelling as Pacific people, you know, the ocean, the land itself. And, um, and I think that when you're looking at really uh, material which is dark or hard to make an audience look at, you have to think how you, uh, what you wrap around it. And I think for children, that are in isolation, that are in cells for men in prison. They can't feel the ocean, they can't feel the wind. These are the things as children and as human beings, you know, we, um, is, you know, the womb, the womb that we're all in the water. And so these are some of the things that we um, used as the visual storytelling. Yeah. Um, for me, Mathias, how are you today? How are you today? I'm a lot better than I was, thank you. And you, how are you today? Today? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel a sense of pride. Um, like my mana has been restored through, through the works with the conch. Um, for, a l for a long time, um, even from our own community, because of what we went through and what we had done, there was a real feeling of shame and being ostracized. Um, you know, um, our own people have been some of the harshest on us. Um, because we were in a success story. And I have, um, today I just feel pride because through our pain, we have found success. Um, and yeah, we've become alchemists, uh, been able to turn pain into gold. Oui, enfin, Moana, vous êtes euh, aujourd'hui écrivain, musicien, acteur. Vous avez même fait une apparition tous les deux euh, dans le film Ghost in the Shell avec euh, Scarlett Johansson. Est-ce que justement on peut dire que ça participe à une certaine guérison ou que c'est une revanche sur la vie You know, um, you know, all this thing about films and that, you know, like when the, when the people who was making uh, Ghost in the Shell came to Wellington, they saw a picture of our white guitar play and the guy looked at my photo and said, I want him in the movie. And I said, I want my son along with me, you know, because I wasn't used to uh, Hollywood sets. I'm very shy and I'm very uh, backward in my thinking and I just like to stay out of the limelight. And so, um, but really, I wanted to come out because I wanted to do something that was positive and to make my parents proud, even though they're not here anymore. I wish they could see me now and, and see that I'm trying to help our own people because, you know, like I say, once upon a time there was very few of us uh, Pacific Islanders in the, um, in the jails, but now it's all brown. Most of the guys that are in jail now, like in my age group and that, we were running the jails, eh? And, you know, We're in the gangs now, and uh, my family, some of my family, they, I had an argument with one of them in the jail when I went and took my book. I wrote my book, and I took it up to one of my cousins up in Mount Eden, and I took one to my other cousin that was in Parry. And one said, you made us look poor. And I had an argument with him. I said, we were bloody poor. 
you know, and then we started going on, you know, and then he, then he settled down and he said, did you tell him about that pedophile Mr. Ricketts? And I said, I told everything, waha. And then he says, oh, yeah, okay. And then he settled down. But that cousin of mine, he's known as the godfather of Auckland crime. He's too proud to get up and, and say something while I'm doing. It's too arty farty for him, eh? But I thought, okay, you be your godfather thing, but I want to help our people. So I went up to my other cousin that night up in Perry, and I said, what do you think, uh, cuz? And he goes, I loved it. You told the truth. And so that was enough for me. I didn't care what the godfather of Auckland crime thought about it. I was just... You know, I got it from that night, who's the older brother. Est-ce qu'on se répare vraiment euh, de ces traumatismes qu'on a vécu euh, dans l'enfance? Pour moi, les arts... Uh, Acting has been a way of unloading my pain, of expressing it, of making sense of it, uh, writing about it. Um, and it's also um, made me realize just how many similarities I have and differences with people that um, I used to think that, you know. So yeah, uh, this has been a long journey for me. It, uh, before I went to drama school, I guess what got me into it was that I was working with another uh, Māori practitioner, Jim Moriarty, who was touring around um, all these residences where youth are kept as uh, youth prisoners and working with them and getting them to tell their stories and helping them perform it in front of their victims that they perform their crimes against. So in a way, I've been able to do the same process uh, with me and my father expressing the pains we went through and put into a theatre form which has become a radio play and now a film so yeah healing yeah I am a much different person and so grateful to the arts and the medium of acting and, and theatre uh, because I've been able to express myself um, so yeah as much as I love the Hollywood stuff and that it's so self-absorbed where this work is for the people and it's about yeah it's just a real ensemble and a, and a company so, yeah. enfin Moana il y a une, une, une scène euh, lorsque vous témoignez pour Children Abuse il y a un échange très fort très émouvant avec une juge d'instruction est-ce que vous pouvez nous raconter comment vous avez vécu ce moment okay. yes That's the first time I ever felt free when I saw that judge from the district court because she's part of the system. And it was so good to see that she was from Samoa, but she was one of the success stories of, of a migrant kid that went over there. So when she said, I claim you that I've been released from many, many jails. Most, I've done about 18 years jails in different institutions starting from 1963. And when she said that at, at that inquiry, That's the first time I really felt true freedom. Catherine, vous êtes euh, la, la productrice du film. Qu'est-ce qui vous a convaincu euh, de produire ce, ce documentaire I started, I came into the Conch family and um, as, a, as a theatre company it's really a family. Nina and Tom built the company over 20 years um, and so to step into the company is to step into their family. So I was very honoured to, to come into their family um, at the time when, just before the very first play um, season of A Boy Called Piano was being developed. So I came on board as the producer for the play Um, and I was immediately brought into this circle of trust. And the bonds of love and trust is what has enabled this story to be told. The love and trust between Fatmoana and Matthias and Tom and Nina over an enormous arc of time, over um, eight years of collaborating on this project, and before that, over 10 years of deep and important, significant relationship. So 
it was a very great honor for me to be brought inside the company and brought inside the Conch family and the Luafutu Ayinga family um, at the same time and to be to be trusted as um, not only the producer uh, bringing you know to, to to bring the story out to the world but also as um, as a guardian of the story I suppose as a, a um, part of the team that is caring for this incredibly beautiful story to bring it out into the light and the the conch has that kopapa of like a mission or purpose to to bring the hidden stories into the light for the purpose of social change to make a meaningful difference to to people to pacific peoples to survivors mm -hmm. to children who are still being taken now to the prisoners who were left behind who never managed to break free of the cycles of incarceration and crime and despair that you know that they never got free that Famuana and Matthias were able to through the power of their incredible gifts as storytellers you know, transcend all of that and, and be free of the system, but there's so many who've been left behind. Um, so to be part of a work that is so meaningful, that has so much healing power, um, and yes, to be part of this, this circle of trust has been one of the great honors of my life. Peut-être la, la dernière question euh, avant de, de refermer cette session Inside the Doc. Euh, cette, cette histoire, elle est, elle est vraiment ancrée euh, on le voit à travers la famille Luafutu, c'est quand même trois générations où cette histoire euh, euh, se passe et c'est une douleur pour ces trois générations. D'après vous, euh, qu'est-ce qu'il faudrait aujourd'hui pour réparer, si c'est possible um, it just takes one. So with my father taking the lead and changing his life, um, really encouraged me to change mine and by the grace of God that uh, I did it early enough to save my son from the same path. My son knows, yeah, this has been educational for my son because he never really knew this part of his grandfather. Yeah, he's only seen me in, in, in the arts, so it was educational for him and with my own children, they don't have the struggles I do, you know. I have a, a daughter with a full scholarship studying law in Canterbury. Um, my son's followed the arts, um, and I've got another daughter that's looking like she's going to take the positive road. So it's changed the course of our family for the next generation. And, um, yeah, I think we're all the better for it, you know. Um, so I'm blessed that, yeah, I've had a medium like theatre and the arts and, and film to... Yeah, help change and steer my life. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't yeah. Do you want to mention the prisoners today? Oh, yeah. That's one of the really wonderful things. The good thing about this, I didn't want to get into movies or anything like that. I just wanted to go home, be with my wife. I have a son who has cerebral palsy. So I was quite happy to just stay home and not have anything more to do other than play guitar because I, that's what I am now. I'm a musician. I have a band. And I play at the blues club, and that's how I make my living. Whereas before, I used to do robberies and stuff and rob people. But uh, what was that thing you were saying? To do with going to the prison. Yeah, and yesterday it was so amazing for me because uh, we went to the prison, and uh, the maximum prison here is security in Tahiti, because that's what we want. We want to show people to bring them out of their uh, trauma or uh, their their challenges. So we went to the prison yesterday and. Um, I saw a guy there, he was the same age as me, and his son was there, same age as my son. And they were both crying, because, you know, that's just what, it was so moving for them to see these tough guys all crying, because they could identify with their own families what was happening here. So I, I try to give them a bit of advice about writing their own stories, so they can reevaluate and look at their past, and then look at look at themselves in the now, look in the mirror, forgive themselves, and move on to a positive thing for their own families. And it was great, and it was an honor. And uh, on Saturday, we're going out to the other prison where there's going to be women and men there, but yesterday we were at the maximum prison. And that's where I really want to take this film. You know, um, that's what I'm about. Um, like my son said, theater, art, and all that for social change. Yeah, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous les quatre. Je crois qu'il y a une dernière projection. Euh, euh, 
ce sera vendredi à 11h20 au Grand Théâtre, Eumann Colpiano. C'est ça, c'est ça. Merci Exactement. beaucoup. Merci. 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 Merci.